Cool. All right. Welcome to the Team Revive Zoom tonight. Matt and I are so excited to be hosting, which is such an honor uh, that Chad and Krista and Morgan um, would invite mm -hmm. us and our team here to share a little bit. So um, I'm Emily. Um, some of you have probably heard a little bit of my story. I've gone fast start gold with Plexus because I have an incredible team. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but that's not really who I am. I'm a homeschooling mom. I'm a writer. Um, Matt and I have founded um, a house church movement here called the One Movement, along with many of these folks as well. Um, what else do we love? Who are we really? Who are we really? Yeah, who are we really? Uh, we own uh, another construction company on top of uh, being uh, health and wellness uh, representatives. So um, I don't, I'd say a number of years ago, by the way, my name is Matt. Nice yeah. to meet you. Um, a number of years ago, uh, the Lord put it on, on my heart to start a construction company. And my wife has been a catalyst to vision, 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 vision for so many years. And now, um, we enjoy uh, a multi-million dollar construction company and it's time for my efforts in a small way to support my wife's movement into Plexus and into owning her small business and all those kinds of things. So I think it's kind of a really a full circle moment for us as a couple because she's kind of let everything be put down for a, for a number of years in order to support my vision and my dream. and. She has poured into that, and then now it's time for the reverse to happen. So I think that's a little part of us. We're homeschooling parents. Yeah. Yep. So pet lovers. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Her all the time. Me sometimes. I think you're always trying to get rid of our dogs. Yes, if yeah, I can. To somebody. They're adoptable. We'll take them. Yeah. So it's just such an honor to be here with you tonight, and we really just want to talk about building belief. So I'm going to share a little bit of what the Lord has put on my heart. And then Matt's going to share a nugget with you. I'm going to try to not be long-winded because he's one of my favorite teachers and I'm excited to hear what he has to say. And then we have three of our team members here tonight to share testimonies of belief. Um, one is uh, a fast start silver, one is a senior silver, and one is fast start gold. So you're going to get some different perspectives. So um, one of the things I want to share tonight is I really feel like this is a message for everybody because yeah. it's all about foundations and no matter where we're at in our journey, mm -hmm. we have to check the foundations. Um, but particularly tonight, I feel like as I was praying for this meeting, the Lord was really highlighting the one. Um, and in, in, in some sense, we're all the one, but those who are struggling, those who might be on the verge of, I want to quit, um, those who have had a really tough month, particularly the Lord tonight put a woman in my mind who's wearing red. And so if you're wearing red, I know we don't get to see all of you know that the Lord is specifically, um, he has you before his eye and he loves you and he specifically has a nugget or something for you tonight to, to apply um, that's going to build belief and begin to uh, reinvigorate Amen. your business. So Amen. it's just such an honor to be here. And what I want to share tonight is about the four R's of belief. And so those four R's are recognize, remember, reposition, and rest. And so I'm going to kind of go through those with you and um, hopefully with each one give you also a little bit of activation to go with information so that um, we actually experience transformation. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first one, the first one is to recognize that belief is important. All right, it's something we can sometimes overlook, but it's foundational and it's an anchor point. Mm -hmm. And so it's something we have to go back to and say, are there any gaps in the walls? Is there any weak spots in my belief? Because we're gonna need that anchor. So our team has just killed it. I mean, from the time we started in April, it's just been ascent, 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 ascent until this month. And so these are the months where you level off or you even dip a little bit that you need belief because you need an anchor mm -hmm. to pull you through mm -hmm. some adversity. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you with Powers Construction over the last 15 years, the overall trend and trajectory has been like this. If you look at 15 years, but there's been lots of this going on 
throughout that time. Yes. And so as we've held on to belief and vision, it pulls us through those moments of adversity. So belief is based on what God says, not on my circumstances, not on my feelings, not on my ability, not on the weather. Yes. It's based on what he says. Yes. And so when we have that word from the Lord, it will come to pass. Yes. His word does not return void. And so that's why it's so important that we have his word. And so I want to share with you, this is my first activation point. I have been hanging in Romans 4 for some time now to um, just activate my belief constantly for the many things that are going on in our life, for Powers Construction, for the One Movement, for mm -hmm. our Plexus business, mm -hmm. for um, the books that God's called me to write, many different things. And so I wanna share a little bit of it with you, but I wanna encourage you to look it up in the message version particularly. I love lots of different versions, mm -hmm. but this in the message version is just gold. So it's Romans 4, 16 through 25. And I just want to share a little bit of it with you because this is the foundation that we have to rest mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way mm -hmm. and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives as pure gift. Mm -hmm. That's the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. Mm -hmm. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say, it's hopeless. This hundred year old body could never father a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God to make good on what he had said. And I'll pause there. But Think about the fact that belief grows and it's contagious. Mm -hmm. Look how far all around the world from heaven to earth, Abraham's belief has gone. Mm -hmm. And so my, what, what I stick with is what has God said about my plexus business? And that kind of leads me to the second R, which is remember because there are going to be moments of adversity mm -hmm. and it's in those months where faith is built where character is confronted where motivation is addressed and a lot of times these months where we don't see the results but belief is being cultivated and built we're coming into further alignment with his ways that's where um really he's setting a, 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 a bigger foundation for the next promotion. Yeah. He's teaching us to steward the next advancement. He's confronting our time management skills mm -hmm. or um, tweaking a motivation in our heart that maybe we didn't recognize wasn't pure. And so that's why in, when we get to the second R, which is remember, um, we have to go back to something. So for me, when I first was, considering plexus, it was a wrestle. Um, I, I did not have a ready yes. It took me a while to get there. And there are different parts to that wrestling story. And for the sake of time, I just want to highlight one tonight. But as I wrestled with the Lord and he took me to Ezekiel 47 and showed me what he was doing and gave me a word to stand on, he said to me, I want to prosper you. And I'm, and I guess I had never really like considered that because I always, I have Matt and he's my, been the provider for my family. And so I was kind of like, you want to prosper me? Like, and then he said, you're going to pay for your Israel trip. And I was like, no, no, Matt's got that. You know, like he'll take care of the Israel trip. You know, we really wanted to go to Israel and then COVID happened. And so um, the trip we were planning on being a part of got canceled. 
And so when we heard that Jeremiah Johnson was going to Israel, we're like, oh, we're going to Israel, you know? So I told the Lord, Matt's got it. It's good. Not that we think about our money as separate, but I'm talking to the Lord here. And he's like, no, I want to prosper you. So in moments of adversity, I go back to that belief of what God spoke. And it carries me through the tough times because I'm hanging on his word in Ezekiel 47, where he's asked us to build him a net for the end time harvest through plexus yep. and his word that he wants to prosper me, Amen. which just blew my mind. Amen. So when we forget what God says, we it leads to fear and that fear leads to distrust and that distrust leads to unbelief and that leads to the removal of his presence. So that's why throughout his word, he says, remember, remember, remember. Mm -hmm. So we recognize that belief is super important to the growth of our business. We remember and go back to that belief to his word or seek out a new word for a new season. Um, that's why uh, team Revive Zooms, Plexus Trainings, Diamond Documentaries, Book Clubs, all of these things are important because they help us remember. They instill belief within us. Um, one of my team members, when she first started for several weeks, she just watched Diamond Documentaries to cultivate <laughs> belief and to give her vision yeah. and courage to step out mm -hmm. into the things God had called her to yeah. do. This, the third thing is to reposition. Business owners constantly have to reposition. So belief drives action. If there's no action, we have to ask the question, do I really believe? And maybe if we're struggling with action, we need to go back and actually build belief so that it leads to action. Because we have ideas, we start with ideas, then we build belief, yep. then that leads to strategy, and then finally we go to implementation. So um, that constant repositioning is so important. Mm -hmm. And specifically for me this month, when I realized it was gonna be a bit of a, of a struggle, as that it wasn't gonna continue this upward trajectory, I sought the Lord and I said, Lord, what are you doing? And he said, I'm working and you're waiting. So that's so important mm -hmm. to know that it's not an advancing month because mm -hmm. if I'm trying to advance when God is saying to wait, I'm going to be really frustrated. And so um, if you're trying to go when you have a no, you're working against the flow. All right. So we need to know our season because our seasons define our boundaries. So belief also brings what it has. It brings its five loaves and its two fish. And it trusts God to multiply that. That's right. um, one, I had the privilege of um, co-hosting Emily Roberts' team Zoom call with Morgan earlier this month. I didn't really know her story, but at one point in her Plexus journey, she lost 3,000 points in one month. I don't even know if you can imagine that, but talk about a massive repositioning. And then she's gone on now to be more successful than she was at first. If she didn't have belief, mm -hmm. if she didn't recognize that was important, if she didn't remember that, I mean, that probably 99% of people would have given up. That takes tremendous resilience. And she's cultivated a belief in her heart, mm -hmm. in Jesus, in Plexus, to be able to weather mm -hmm. that kind of once-in-a-lifetime storm. Yeah. Um, so the other thing the Lord told me this month as I was seeking repositioning for from him was Ruby by Christmas. So having that end goal also then begins to direct my actions because we mm -hmm. manage a lot of different things mm -hmm. and we wear a lot of different hats and we <clears> juggle <throat> them. And so having an understanding of what God's word is guides my season well. Mm -hmm. So the last R, and I'm going to pass it off to Matt, is rest. We have the privilege of living in the finish. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, he said to tell us that, which means it mm -hmm. is finished. If God commits himself to, to a work, it's going to get done. So I like to ask my team, what's your finish? And the Lord may change that goalpost from time to time. But in this season, if you know that, you can rest in it. 
And that belief then drives your action and it actually propels you forward. And as you seek strategy and blueprints from heaven and bring them down to earth, then you can rest in what God is doing. Amen. So, um, Amen. Amen. thank you so much for letting me share. Let's hear what Matt has to say. All right. So here's the risk, right? So we did not share with each other what the specifics were other than we knew what the theme was. So this is the moment of discovery to find the overlap. Um, my heart, just like my wife's in many ways, um, it goes to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is my firm foundation. And so I'm going to start there in order to establish a principle, which can then be built upon for the three points that the Lord gave me. So I'm reading from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And it, in a Bible, the little header literally says two foundations. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and they slammed against the house. And yet it did not fall because it was founded upon the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. And in many ways, even Emily Roberts' testimony and story that Emily just mentioned is an example of a storm slamming against a house that was established. But because it was established on a firm foundation, even though those points probably hurt badly internally, not just in the business, there was a resilience to stand. And we're going to move and build upon that because Emily has already mentioned that belief brings about endurance, something that lasts. And when we receive a word from the Lord, like a promise from the Lord, these are firm foundations that uphold a spirit, not just a mind. And so I pull again uh, from another story of my wife's, which is perhaps you're someone just like her whose yes came because God asked you to say yes. Not because you were searching for it, not because you were fishing for it, but your yes came because God asked you, are you willing to follow me into this? And one of the most beautiful things I think about that kind of a journey or that kind of a question where a yes has been given to something that the Lord has prompted is this, and this is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is both the author and the perfecter of our faith. Literally, that means that he is the pioneer and he is the completer. He is both. So if your yes aligns with his vision, then you need not worry because he is going to write your story and he is going to complete it. It's one of the most beautiful things about a yes that has a firm foundation rooted in the word of God or in a promise of our God. Belief, it trusts the process that has been established and it doesn't fray or stray from it because you will see it through. Why? Because he has promised that he will see it through. And if that is true, then I can hang on to the very things that have been established in my company or my business that will carry me through the rocky times, the rough times, the places where there are no answers seemingly, and yet you come out on the other side. Belief is able to weather storm an obstacle, as Emily said. But because of this firm foundation that's been laid, belief then also allows or gives the ability to take risk. And I don't care who you are, if you're an entrepreneur in any way, shape, or form, there is risk involved 100%. Whether that's just your time or your finances or the things in relationship, whatever it might be, there's going to be some kind of a sacrifice or risk that is required in order to grow something that is bigger than you. But a firm foundation enables you to take that risk or to venture into the unknown. But the Lord, this is one of the nuggets I think the Lord wants to deposit tonight. He, he gave this to my heart just to ask the question, which is this. Is my foundation based on me entering into what God is doing? Or am I asking him to conform to what I'm doing? Is my foundation built on what he is doing? Or am I asking him to come in and conform to what I'm doing? 
And this is so often the case because we have big dreams and the Lord has given us imagination, the creativity and all these different things. And he's saying, go, be released, do what I have commissioned you to do in the land. But yet he's saying at the same time, I want to partner with you. I created you for such a time as this, and I want the beauty of what I have breathed into you and made you to be, to be glorified and manifested in all the earth. And that is the truth of whether you're running a ministry, a construction company, Plexus Health and Wellness, trying to parent your children at home and have a healthy marriage. It doesn't matter what the sphere of influence is. These kinds of things are applicable to what the heart of the Lord is for this. The scripture says this, and this is Romans also, and it's also out of the message. Um, Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 3. Abraham entered into what God was doing for him, and that was the turning point. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. And the word of the Lord also says, it is for we walk by faith, but not by sight. And it's only possible, all of this is only possible, walking these things out, my business plan and all these different things. If I am expecting him to fit into my plan and my business plan, I'm just saying, Lord, here's my plan. I've laid it out. Where do you fit? I'll just put you a little bit of Jesus on top and that'll make it holy. The reality is, is that what he's saying is, is that if I walk in his plan, then he will author my plan and he will complete my plan. And I don't have to go searching for that. That's literally in the word of God. I've already read it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Author and perfecter. Belief also inspires those who have vision to lead. History's best leaders oftentimes are motivated by belief, not statistics or numbers. And in many times, the leaders that we, we recognize and that we admire are the ones that had both the numbers and the statistics against them. And yet they led a group of people or a nation through a hard time. We oftentimes think of these things as like army generals or teachers or CEOs or coaches or parents or owners of small businesses, whatever it might be, these kinds of individuals who throughout history have a place on the timeline of marking. Why? Because they had a belief that was bigger than the facts that were around them. And when your belief is a more firm foundation than the stats or your numbers going up or down or whether I'm continually to rise from jewel to jewel to jewel or my team and where are we at with our points this month and all these kinds of goals that should be set. But if that is the sole focus and the sole driver, then the motivation runs thin and shallow. But when the roots grow deep onto a firm foundation, then no matter what, whether you're in a season of waiting or a season of climbing, that foundation is firm enough both to lift you up and to hold you steady when the storm comes through. Why is this so important? Because belief fuels action. Why does it fuel action? Because people are more likely to rally around a vision than an idea. Ideas get funding, but vision gets a following. And that's just the truth of it. You can put the best idea you want out there all you want, and you can get people to buy into it and all these things. But when you get a vision on the table, you can rally an entire community of people, which is why testimony and story is so vital to the Plexus experience and to the Plexus movement. And there are lots of good ideas, I'll tell you this. There are lots of good ideas that have never seen the light of day. But when there is a true vision that is on the table, it always finds a voice. The word of the Lord says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. And so we see that Plexus, through all of its different modes, the leadership of Chad and Krista, the leadership of Morgan, and the teamwork networking of all of these individuals has built a firm foundation for us to be able to build our company on our team on, and we thank you for that. Um, I think one of the beauties of vision and one of the beauties of raising leaders and one of the be beauties of having belief in this way is to be able to pass the baton to other leaders in your team in order to hear their story and testimony to spur on what the Lord is doing. So I pass the, the baton to you, Julie. Hey guys. I just have a real quick story about a um, 
This is a testimony of someone, uh, a friend of mine. Um, she immediately, when I saw the products, I thought of her. She's battled Lyme and the side effects from it for five or six years now and just um, not getting any relief, not really making a ton of progress. And so um, I reached out to her and asked her if she had heard of Plexus and she had. And so we started having a conversation. And um, so then I just kind of like spilled out like the products and the business to her. And we had been texting back and forth and back and forth. And she went radio silent on me. And um, so I was kind of like, okay. And come like six, six and a half, seven hours later, she hadn't said anything. And I started, you know, kind of just being like, oh, what's going on? And in my life, personally, across the board, the Lord's really been working with me to like root out the fear of man. And I'll tell you, in that moment, it reared its ugly head. And so, you know, I'm picking up my phone and some of you can probably relate. And I'm starting to send the text of like, um, you know, it's OK if you want to do this, we can still be friends. And, you know, like kind of like backpedaling a bunch and um and as it turns out, about 30 minutes later, she texts me and she's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I should have let you know. I just had a busy day, you know, just like classic mom life of running kids around and dinner and bedtime and baths and all of the things that she was just getting back to me. Um, and so the Lord actually corrected me later that night and said, you know, it didn't matter how she had responded in that moment. I knew where your heart was and your heart is that you just want to see her well and you just love her and you thought that this would be a great thing for her. And so he knows where my heart is and I know where my heart is. And so it's actually on the other person on how they want to receive it. And that's not my responsibility because I know where, I, why I'm moving out towards them. And so that was like a really cool correction from him throughout this whole thing. Um, but further, I got to like discuss with her and she's, she had moved to meet with like a naturopath and is on about like 11 or 12 different supplements. And so ultimately throughout our conversation, she's like, yeah, I'd be interested to seeing if Plexus had any like com products that would compare to what I'm taking. And so I said, send me your supplement list. And so we got her supplement list and myself along with Molly on our team worked together and kind of put together um, the comparables for her. And then we actually ran it by Krista, which is another thing that I love about this community is just like the willingness and availability of everyone to support each other and just come alongside and give their knowledge of things to like help you out. So she had kind of given us her feedback about that. And so I got to put it together and present it to my friend. And um, still when she got that, she was just like, okay, great. And there really wasn't any great movement. And that's when I just decided, you know what, I'm going to stand in the gap and believe for her right now, because I felt like the Lord hadn't released her from me. He put her on my heart and there was really just something there for her. And so I just continued to check in every couple of days, once a week, I'd send her a testimony, I'd send her some product information and just kind of like kept the dialogue going. And about six weeks had passed. And this past um, week, she texted me and said, so I'm on the Plexus website. I said, okay, like, are we researching product or are we ordering? And she's like, we're ordering. And I was just kind of like, okay. So I immediately called her. Um, and got to talk to her and she proceeded to tell me that last week she was reminded of a friend that she worked with like six or seven years ago um, that also had Lyme and she remembered all of a sudden that she had told her she was taking Plexus. So she called her friend um, last week just to get her opinion on it. And her friend was like, yes, absolutely. It has helped me tremendously. And here's the regimen that I would recommend you start with. And it turns out that it's the exact regimen that we had put together for her. So, um, so she placed the order and she's going to start her journey this week. And I'm just thrilled um, for her and expectant for her testimony coming out. But it's just one of those things that like, um, had I not stood in the gap and believed for her before she believed for herself, we probably wouldn't be here. She probably wouldn't have placed the order and she probably wouldn't have the opportunity to move forward in wellness that is available for her. So um, I hope that encourages you because I think we've all kind of been in a situation like that, or maybe there's a situation to come that will be like that. But I feel like if the Lord's placed someone on your heart 
to keep pursuing and keep praying in the waiting and believing for them until either they believe for themselves or the Lord releases them on a different path because that could happen too. But um, yeah, so it's just kind of like a cool thing that I got to experience this week and grow my faith to be able to do that further for other people um, going on. So um, yeah, that's my testimony. And I think Molly, um, my sister, girl that I get to call a sister, one of the best encouragers I know, uh, has something else for us tonight. Thanks, Julie. Um, what a cool story. So celebrating um, that, like, just so cool. Um, I'm the Diamond Documentary Watcher, by the way. <laughs> totally recommend it. It's like a thing. It's, it totally builds belief. Definitely recommend starting with Krista's. Hers is awesome. And it's linked on her Instagram in case you can't find it. Um, but so I totally, um, agree with what Matt was saying and, um, being rooted in a promise that the Lord gave you. And so he had given me one a couple weeks ago, kind of for this month. And it's interesting because um, Emily referenced Ezekiel 47 that about spreading the nets, the word, um, I guess she didn't really say that, but that's kind of like a word that he, the Lord had given her at the beginning of our journey, uh, was spreading nets and gathering fish in. And, um, so because of a whole different other trail, the Lord led me to that same chapter, a couple verses later, and I'm going to read it to you. It said, and beside the river on its bank, on this side and on that side will grow all trees for food whose leaf will not fade, neither will it fail to produce fruit. It will bring forth new fruit according to its months every month because their waters issued out of the sanctuary and its fruit will be for food and its leaf will for medicine. And what a cool promise, right? Like basically the, the thing that I've clung to the most, like Emily said, in a month where you're not necessarily seeing a lot on the surface or we're not like seeing the forward momentum, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean he's not working because it says that every month mm -hmm. there's new fruit. And so the fruit for this month might look like faith. That might be the fruit this month. But how important is it that we build belief in our business for the next month and the next month and the next month? And remembering back to the month when he built our faith so that we can continue. And then when there's another month similar or something else, just like Emily said, to remember. So whatever, there is fruit for every month because the trees were being watered by him. Mm -hmm. And if we look at our business like a tree and are not, and we are rooted in him and being watered by him, our fruit will be for food and our leaf will be for medicine. Mm -hmm. So not only is there um, promise, but there's also something we can give to other people. And um, I want to see people get well, you mm -hmm. know, um, in all areas of life. Mm -hmm. So I just, that's a cool promise that I'm standing on right now out of Ezekiel 47. Again, I encourage you to read it in multiple different translations, but something else that's just kind of funny that, um, is a practical thing is that, um, there's been two times when I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm like really busy. I'm like, okay, Lord, like, am I supposed to be doing this? Is this what you want for me? And so literally both times I pull into Aldi the first time it was a, quite a few months ago there's this van right next to me giant plexus sticker on the back and I'm like <laughs> okay I get it so last week I had another day like that like are you sure Lord like this is a lot we're about to start school like are you sure you want me to do this pull into like my local market same van giant plexus sticker <laughs> on the back so when we asked him he'll build our belief if we look for it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I just encourage you to ask, look, yep. he'll show you, he'll show you a promise directly from his word mm -hmm. and his word is living and active and it will never return void. True. 
and he'll show us practical things in our everyday, like, okay, I get it. It's loud and clear. Um, I see the plexus sticker. <laughs> I've never met the person. I kind of wonder if it's an angel. <laughs> but um, anyway, I just encourage you to ask him to build your belief too. And any of the practical things that we've given tonight, it helps. Even if it doesn't, if you don't see it, there's fruit. Mm -hmm. Just rest in that. Mm -hmm. And so um, now I'm going to pass it off. Uh, to Aaron. Hey, y'all. Um, so quite a unique, diverse, um, I don't know, experience from Matt and M to Molly and Julie. And uh, I think for me, what the Lord's been teaching me is how big of a God do you, do you want me to be? Right. And if in Jeremiah 32, 17 says, there is nothing too difficult for you, then my belief needs to be that nothing is too difficult for him. It's impossible for me, um, without him, but with him, I mean, like sky is the limit. So just believing that, um, when we ask him of big things, Maybe it's not the right time. It's not like he's just going to make it happen right then and there, but in the right season of your life, he will make it come into fruition um, with that belief that nothing is too difficult for him. And so one of those things for me was when Emily and I started this ministry called Seven, which is a wellness ministry that, that fuses the science of, cre of it fuses creation, the seven days of creation and science together for spirit, soul, and body transformation. And at first, really the outlook was like locally. And the Lord's like, no, this is not just a local ministry. Um, this is something that's going to go far beyond your borders, just locally, Northeast Ohio, um, you know, North, South, East, and West is where this seven is going to go. And I'm like, all right, well then if that's, if that's your plan, then I have to believe that nothing is too difficult for you. And so when Emily and I had started it, the one thing that we kind of were missing a little bit of, I would say is just the body part of it, where I wanted to be able to implement something very simple that paired with seven, um, for people to see some transformational results physically. And because seven gets to the root of, um, spiritual transformation, um, through Jesus, just like plexus gets to the root of health transformation, um, with healing and repairing gut issues. So we can see back in Molly's verse that she gave in Isaiah, that there's the food and the medicine that come with, with Jesus, with having him in our life. And so, um, if he's the bread of life and we're teaching from his word that yes, he wants us to be well first and foremost. Um, and plexus is a tool that we can use to reach people as medicine to help them also be well. And so it was a no brainer to pair you know, plexus with our seven ministry in order for people to truly be well. And so as we're going into this next phase of creating and um, writing content and just, you know, he fully believing um, it's difficult for me to want to put out in my head onto paper so that it um, is well read and people can grasp the concepts and the information. But the belief is just, um, you know, nothing is impossible for God. He's going to bring people to you that want to be well. Um, he's going to bring people your way that they may not want to be well right now, but planting that seed and standing in belief for them, like Julie did with their friend and letting him rain on it, they may come back around. Um, and just say, all right, now's the right timing. And so when we prioritize him as a God that's larger than what we can do for ourselves, then it makes things a little less pressure on us. Yes, we still have to put one foot in front of the other and do the work. It's not going to just magically appear. Um, but certainly with him as the, the author and the finisher and the completer of our faith, it's going to be a lot more simple if we just rest in the fact that believing he is the God of impossible, believing um, that he has people already lined up for us uh, in a way that 
is going to help us to achieve our goals month in and month out, whether it's something that we gain, like Molly said, faith, or if it's legitimately gaining a whole nother, you know, level up, um, he has great plans in store for us. So I would just encourage you to really rely on the fact that nothing is impossible for him. It is impossible for us without him. So make him the author and the foundation of your faith, make him the author and the foundation of your belief and, um, just see how big, you know, we are only limiting him by our belief. And so if we think he's small and we'll only do the small things, then that's what we're going to get. But if we believe him for the big things and we fully trust that he will walk us through that, um, then I truly believe that he's a God who loves his children well and wants to walk with them in that. So, um, nothing is too difficult for God. And so that's just uh, my word of encouragement for you. If you're kind of wondering if this is something that might be too hard for you, um, it might be hard for you, but when you start to find other teammates to support you, just like, um, Julie said how Krista, you know, we all have this great community of people. No one should be out there walking alone. Um, it makes things a lot easier to do when we have teams rather than just doing it on your own. So, um, that's my little experience knowing that, you know, now I have a tool to pair with seven, um, is going to help make that just one, one notch a little bit higher and believing that God's just going to completely, uh, blow it out of the water for us because I mean, he is the God of impossible. So Matt and M, I think it's back to you. Yep. Thank you, Aaron. And my practical tip with Aaron is Aaron owns a gym. Um, and so she's a health and wellness professional. So when you're looking for new team members, don't just think individuals, think business owners, because with Aaron came a huge number mm -hmm. of VIPs. So that's just a practical tip with that is to, to just widen your net and think about schools of fish, right? Rather than individual fish. So thank you for your time. We know that went over a little bit tonight. John Curtis, Molly's husband, I'm going to ask you to close this out with a, with a brief prayer and wrap things up. Father, you're so good. And Lord, um, by faith, I just release faith amongst all the people watching um, tonight, Lord, that they would believe that, like Aaron just said, that you are the God of the impossible. And there's um, nothing that's too far, too big, um, too hard for you. So I just pray for a fresh um, encounter, a fresh partnership with you, a fresh inviting of you into the business to allow the roots to go deep and um, and the increase to come. So we're just believing that. I just pray blessing over everyone on tonight. Lord, that the increase would come um, spiritually, physically, uh, and prosperity in, in all the ways and all the things of your kingdom in your heart. So we praise you, Lord. We thank you. All glory to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good night. Thanks, thank Jennifer. You. Thanks, thank Lord. You.